<clears throat> hey, welcome back. This is Mr. Sullivan. We are here on lesson 4B. All right. Again, this is an incredibly long lesson. We're adding and subtracting last time that it was 4A. Today, we're going to multiply and divide. Now, I think multiplying and dividing are pretty easy with fractions. <clears throat> well, I don't know that anything is easy with fractions, but I like multiplying and dividing because they're essentially done the same way. All right, there's one little uh, thing that you need to take care of. So now there are two ways you can multiply and divide. If I have this fraction, 2 15 times 5 8, you can multiply straight across. 2 times 5 is 10, 15 times 8 is 120. That is the standard way, but then you have to remember to reduce your fractions. Totally okay. Works the same with um, polynomials 10x squared, 120x's. You have to reduce at the end. There's nothing different there, okay? However, um, I don't really like this method because you're going to find out as these polynomials get bigger and you're going to multiply a binomial times a binomial and then you're going to have to factor at the end. That is going to be really, really tough. I think method A stinks, all right? It is a big stinky diaper. What I do like is method B. And what they do in method B is they look for a common factor. So for example, this 2 goes into this 8 four times. So there's a 1 here and there's a 4 here. There's always a 1, all right? There's always something up top. Uh, this 5 goes into 15 three times. And then I can see it's just 1 times 1 is 1. 3 times 4 is 12. I, I think that works incredibly easier. The x's cancel, for example. Um, let's just do a couple. Let's get right into it. I like method B. I'm never going to stop someone from doing a different method if they like it. But, you know, sometimes you got to make the wise decision. All right. So here's what I like to do. I like you to understand that this essentially is two fractions, but really it's just one. So I'm just going to write everything here. 3AB squared, 2C squared. It's all on top. On the bottom, I have 4C times 27AB. Everything is on the top. It doesn't matter. As long as I have a factor that is the same on top and bottom, I can cancel them. For example... This A and this A can cancel because they are the same. They cancel. Now, I have B squared here. That means I have two Bs and I have one B here. I can cancel this B here. And I had two Bs. Now I'm left with one B, right? Same thing here. Two goes into four twice. I have one C here and two Cs here. So that C is gone. And instead of having two Cs, I have one C left. All right, three, three goes into 27 nine times. All right, now I look at it and I say, what is left? I have one times B times one times C. Well, that is just BC on top, all right? On the bottom, let's see what I have left. I have everything, I have two times nine, which is just 18. So we got um, BC over 18 and we are ready to roll. That was great. All right, let's try the next one. Now, same thing, couple of things. I'm going to rewrite this. This is 3x. Now I'm going to write them, kind of group them. This is x minus 3. All right, side note, very important side note. We can only cancel things that are being multiplied. We cannot cancel things that are being added. Those are called terms. These are being added or subtracted. I cannot cancel X and X. All right? It does not work. No way, Jose. I can cancel things that are being multiplied, though. And that is why I like to make sure I put these in parentheses so I understand that's being multiplied. That whole thing is one factor. Down here, I have 5X minus 15. It's good to factor anytime I can. I can take a common factor out of that. That's 5. And then I have an x minus 3. Then over here I have 9x squared. All right, let's take a look here. Maybe a different color. All right, the x minus 3s cancel. We're sure about that. All right, now 3 goes into 9 three times. And this x cancels with two x's, and I have one x left over. So if I look at my top, I have nothing but a 1 on top. And on the bottom, I have a 5 times 3x, that is 15x. And I don't like that marker at all. All right? 
1 over 15x. Let's try another one. All right. So again, I'm going to make one big fraction. So I am multiplying x plus 5 times the, new, the other numerator, x minus 3, because I multiply straight across. Here I'm going to factor two numbers that multiply to 3 and add to negative 4. That's going to be negative 3 and negative 1. Here I have a common factor, so I'm going to take that out. That's a 4, and that's going to be x plus 5. So this whole factor here, x plus 5, cancels this whole factor here, x plus 5. This whole factor here, x minus 3, cancels this whole factor here, x minus 3. Now we have to remember, there's always something on top because anything divided by itself equals 1. So I'm going to have a 1 on top, and I'm going to have 4 times x minus 1 on the bottom. Now, here's a great question. Should I multiply that out? Should I have 4x minus 4? You totally can. But in my experience, that's more work. And more work equals more opportunities to mess up and make mistakes. And, oh, I don't like making mistakes. All right? All right, so I want you to pause the video right now, and I want you to try letter D all by yourself. All right, so I... Took a common factor out, got 7 times x minus 1, x plus 5. Here, two numbers that multiply to negative 6 and add to negative 5 are negative 6 and positive 1. Down here, 3x squared. Here, I took a common factor out, and I had x, mi x squared minus 1. Here, I took a common factor of x out, and then I had x squared plus 6x plus 5. Had a factor on the bottom. The top stayed. But on the bottom, x squared minus 1 was x minus 1 and x plus 1. And two numbers that multiplied to 5 and added to 6 were 5 and 1. Then I had several things that canceled out, and I was left with 7 times x minus 6, and 3x, or 27x to the third times x plus 1. All right, so let's look at division of fractions. Division of fractions, uh, you know, just got to remember one little trick here. When I divide by a fraction, I change the problem to multiplying by the reciprocal, now, don't be that person and change the first one. No, no, no. I always flip the second one. All right? I always flip the second one. All right, let's take a look. Let's get right into it, right? I mean, why waste your time? Here we go. Page 440. So I'm going to rewrite it. Now, again, I'm going to write it 9AB squared. I'm going to write one fraction. On the bottom here, I have 4C. Now, this I'm flipping. So 5AB was on the bottom. Now it's going to be on the top. 18C squared was on the top. Now it's going to be on the bottom. All right, let's take a look. Well, 9 goes into 18 twice. And that's it. <laughs> All right, so 5 times 1 is 5. I have 1A and 1A. That's A squared. B squared and B, that's B to the third. On the bottom is 4 times 2 is 8. And I have a C and a C to the second, that's a C to the third. That is a super lame one. So let's try a different one. All right. All right, so here we go. So I have 7X. I'm going to make one fraction. Over here, I'm going to factor this out. I have a 3 and I have X squared minus 9. All right, now I'm going to flip this one. I'm multiplying by the reciprocal. So this goes on top. 3X minus 9 goes on top. So I'm going to take a common factor out. This is 3 and x minus 3, right? So 3 and x minus 3. And then 4x squared was on top. Now it goes on the bottom. All right, let's take a look here. 7x and 3 and x minus 3. But this I can factor. So that's 3 times x minus 3 and x plus 3 and 4x squared. Let's see what we got here. X minus 3, goodbye. Thanks for visiting. These 3s are gone. I have an X here. And I have two X's here, so I have an X left. So let's take a look what we have left. On top, I have a 7. On the bottom, all that I have left is a 4X and an X plus 3. And that's it. So um, I know I only did two examples, but I really want you to try this one on your own. And just remember, you got to flip the second one, multiply by the reciprocal. So pause the video and try this one on your own. All right, so first thing I did was I factored this. I took a 3x out, and then I had x plus 5. 
On the bottom, I had two numbers that multiplied to negative 40 and added to negative 3. That was negative 8 and positive 5. Now, I flipped this one and multiplied it by the reciprocal. So x squared minus 64 went on top here, but that was a difference of squares, so that's x minus 8 and x plus 8. And 5x squared was on the top, and now it's on the bottom because I multiplied by the reciprocal. Cancel some things out. These x plus 5s, that x minus 8, 1x here. So I had 3 times x plus 8 over 5x. All right, I hope you do well on this mastery check. I hope you learned a lot. Make sure you ask for help. There's a lot of people in your room that are experts and know how to do this really well. They are your students. They are your parents at home. They are your teachers. There are a lot of people in that room and at home that know how to do this. So if you're sitting there not knowing how to do it, shame on you. Ask for help. There's no shame in that game. All right, I'll see you next time. Peace.